1962, the world experienced one of the greatest moments of tension since the beginning of the Cold War, a direct nuclear confrontation between the United States and the Soviet Union is narrowly avoided. At the same time, on the Atlantic coast in Wales, United Kingdom, a school opened its doors and welcomed its first students. Why not start a chain of international schools for teenagers in the cause of peace? One of the founders of Atlantic College was Kurt Hahn, the German educational pioneer. He believed that if young people from different backgrounds were educated together, they would build a shared understanding which could prevent future conflicts. That became the unique vision of the UWC movement. Soon after, in 1967, Lord Mountbatten became president of the organization and renamed it United World Colleges. I obtained the consent of the International Council to change its name to United World College. Or simply UWC. While humankind set foot on the moon for the first time, One, UWC expanded. In 1974, Pearson College UWC was founded in Canada. In 1975, UWC Southeast Asia became a full member of the UWC movement. Lord Mountbatten was a driving force in the creation of national committees led by passionate volunteers who were responsible for promoting UWC and selecting students from all around the world. His Royal Highness Prince Charles, now King Charles III, took on the role of UWC president in 1978. They are not schools for uh, wealthy people's children or the sons and daughters of diplomats or whatever, politicians um, or princes. Um, but in order to come here, you must qualify. By the end of the 80s, seven United World Colleges had emerged around the world, including in Eswatini, then Swaziland, the United States, Italy and Venezuela. During the 90s, with the introduction of UWC short courses, more young people benefited from UWC's unique education model. The UWC school network also grew with two more UWC schools launched in Asia and one in Europe. Nobel Peace Prize winner, President of South Africa and anti-apartheid activist Nelson Mandela assumed the joint presidency of UWC with Queen Noah of Jordan in 1995. In the beginning of the 21st century, there were 10 UWC schools around the world. And despite the closure of the school in Venezuela, the number continues to grow. From Costa Rica to Bosnia and Herzegovina, from the Netherlands to Armenia and Germany, from China to Thailand, Japan and Tanzania. Today, the UWC network has 18 UWC schools and colleges across four continents. Every year, more than 12,500 students access a UWC education. UWC is represented in more than 150 countries and territories through its mostly volunteer-led national committees, with over 60,000 UWC alumni around the world. More than six decades and two Nobel Peace Prize nominations later, UWC continues passionately to make education a force to unite people, nations and cultures for peace and a sustainable future. With the world in a state of climate emergency, social injustice and global conflict, humanity is facing many challenges. Every day, UWC students and alumni, teachers, parents and families, donors and passionate volunteers actively make a difference in their communities and inspire others to do the same. Wherever a uwc -er goes, they will be unwilling to settle for less. And they mean it. <laughs> <laughs>